The North American Aerospace Defense Command is charged with defending North America's airspace. On the morning of September 11th, 2001, Vice President Dick Cheney was in control of NORAD. This was the first time in U.S. history that a president or vice president was in direct control of the military agency. NORAD was founded in 1957, and generals always had the power to shoot down or intercept hijacked aircraft. But on June 1st, 2001, just three months before 9-11, Dick Cheney ordered Donald Rumsfeld to allow him to take control of NORAD itself and the shoot-down procedure and remove that power from the generals so they could do nothing. Here is a copy of the memorandum from Rumsfeld to the Joint Chiefs telling them they no longer have any authority. An Associated Press article in August of 2002 reported that the CIA just so happened to be running a drill on the morning of 9-11 of flying jets in the World Trade Center and Pentagon. Then senior FAA officials ordered air traffic controllers to shred the tapes from 9-11 in violation of federal law. AP learned of the drills because at a Homeland Security function after 9-11, they bragged about it. Oh, we had foresight. We were running drills that very morning. Then USA Today reported that drills held weeks before 9-11 included targets that were the Pentagon and World Trade Center. The biggest holes in their argument is the fact that they never heard of a plan to fly hijacked jets into landmarks on the East Coast. We're going to take a closer look tonight at another example of where, despite the conventional wisdom, there were people in the United States who actually were preparing to defend against the kind of attacks which occurred here on 9-11. The North American Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD for short, has been defending the skies over the U.S. and Canada for almost 50 years, 46 to be precise. USA Today reports that in the two years before the attacks on September the 11th, NORAD conducted exercises using hijacked airliners as weapons. And one target was the World Trade Center. We knew he hated us. But there was uh, nobody in our government, at least, and I don't think the prior government that could envision flying airplanes into buildings on such a massive scale. But that turns out not to be true. U.S. military planners did envision and practice those very scenarios. As reported by USA Today, the North American Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD, conducted exercises with fighter jets, simulating hijacked planes flown into the World Trade Center in the two years before the attack. And so then I saw Condoleezza Rice get up on TV and say, we had never thought, we had never heard. Why, that's a ridiculous conspiracy theory to say that. Pentagon planners also envisioned the attack on the Pentagon five months before it happened. The Pentagon had a drill in November of 2000 simulating a hijacked jet being flown to the Pentagon. So between all the drills before 9-11 and the drill in the morning of 9-11, air traffic controllers thought that it was a simulation. Hijacked aircraft headed towards New York. Is this, is this real world or exercise? No, this is not an exercise, not a test. September 11, 2001. NORAD is in the middle of a number of military exercises. The first, Vigilant Guardian, is described as an exercise that would pose an imaginary crisis to North American air defense outposts nationwide. The second, Northern Vigilance moved fighter jets to Canada and Alaska to fight off an imaginary Russian fleet. Three F-16s from Washington, D.C.'s National Guard at Andrews Air Force Base, 15 miles from the Pentagon, are flown 180 nautical miles away for a training mission in North Carolina. This left 14 fighter jets to protect the entire United States. Um, I wanted to focus just a moment on the uh, Presidential Emergency Operating Center. <clears throat> you were there uh, for a good part of the day. I think you were there with the Vice President. And uh, we had that order given, I think it was by the president, that uh, authorized uh, the shooting down of commercial aircraft that were suspected to be controlled by terrorists. Um, were you there when that order was given? No, I, I was not. I was made aware of it uh, during the time that the airplane coming in to the Pentagon 
uh, there was a young man who would come in and say to the vice president, the, the plane is 50 miles out, the plane is 30 miles out. And when it got down to the plane is 10 miles out, uh, the young man also said to the vice president, do the orders still stand? And uh, the vice president turned and whipped his neck around and said, of course the orders still stand. Have you heard anything to the contrary? Well, at the time, I didn't know what all that meant. And um, the flight you're referring to is the, the one flight that came into the Pentagon. Pentagon. The fact that they were holding war games on the day that mimicked um, the actual attack scenario in every aspect, and then that afterwards they claimed we couldn't have imagined that such a thing would happen, although it was exactly the scenario that we were rehearsing. Hijackings, crashes into buildings, um, you know, an emergency in New York City, all this was being rehearsed on the day as part of a plan. So when they say we couldn't have imagined it, they're lying. We've now found out that there were 15 exercises going on that day involving all the fighter jets in the northeastern portion of the United States. What are the odds of that occurring? I'm supposed to believe in some kind of coincidence, there was also an anti-terrorist drill going on on 7-7. And again, just like 9-11, they were talking about attacks on the same targets, the same kind of tube stations, at exactly the same time as the actual attack happened. How many of you know that NORAD stood down for over an hour and 25 minutes, but if your Cessna gets off course for five minutes, they're going to launch F-16s on you? Remember Payne Stewart, the golfer? Fifteen minutes after his jet got off track, they had F-16s all around him. But on 9-11, in the most controlled airspace in the world, they could do nothing about four jets. But it gets worse. Guess why NORAD stood down? The average people in the military are good folks. They were told it was a drill because the Associated Press reported and the CIA's own website admits that on the morning of 9-11, the CIA was running a drill of flying hijacked jets into the World Trade Center and Pentagon. It was just a coincidence at 8.30 in the morning there was a drill of the exact same thing happening and so NORAD stood down. My thesis is, able danger are the terrorist controllers. Mohammed Atta, he can't get through the day. He's got to have money. He's got to have help. Terrorist controllers, case officers, babysitters for Atta. The main consumer of able danger intelligence is Major General Jeffrey Lambert, Special Forces. And he tells them, he says, look, they have a chart with all these Al-Qaeda characters, including Atta, before the fact. And he gets these yellow post-it notes, and he puts one on Atta's face, saying, that reminds you, you can't share information about him. So they knew exactly who these people were, of course, because they were telling them what to do. Every year, there's a drill called Able Warrior. And the theme is only one thing, anti-terrorism. Now, if you look at the way that they do this, they have drills in binary pairs. One side pretends to be the defenders, and the other side pretends to be the attackers, okay? So if able warrior are the defenders, anti-terrorism, what's able danger? Able danger is a troop of attackers to be used to simulate attacks during anti-terror drills. In other words, those double agents are there as actors, if you like, in normal drills, but then at a certain point, wham, the drill goes live and something happens. You said there'll be a time for politics, but you've also said you wanted to change the tone of Washington. Howard Dean recently seemed to muse aloud whether you had advanced knowledge of 9-11. Do you agree or disagree with the RNC that this kind of rhetoric borders on political hate speech? Yeah. Uh, look, there's time for politics. And, uh, you know, it's time for politics. And uh, I... Uh, it's an absurd insinuation. In that case, sir, can I follow up on something unrelated? Uh, 